Hello, my name is Ben Brown. I'm a filmmaker and photographer, and we are in the Kruger National Park. After meeting my girlfriend, Nicole, in South Africa, she would often tell me about the challenges facing the rhinos. After seeing it for myself firsthand last year, I began to understand the reality of the situation. Now we're both here to get the latest updates on the war on poaching. The war on rhino poaching is not a new topic. Rhino have been wiped out in many African countries, with the largest population now living in South Africa, in the Kruger National Park. In 2014, over 1,200 rhino were poached in South Africa. The following year, that number was reduced to 1,175, thanks to the efforts of Unite Against Poaching. The demand for rhino horn is at an all-time high, causing an average of 10 poachers to enter the park each day. With the number of incidences increasing, it's incredible to see the park gain more control of the situation and reduce the number of poached rhino. My name is John Turner, National Chairman of Conservation Services in the South African National Park's Honorary Rangers. The rhino crisis changed all our lives um, about seven years ago. A rhino poaching is basically for the horn, uh, they leave the carcass behind, they don't take any meat or anything like that. And um, contrary to, to public opinion, um, the horn is 70% used for ornamental purposes, jewellery, 30% uh, of that is used for medicinal purposes. And in the east it's, it's a great status symbol. Yeah, it starts off now, as it relaxes, it relaxes Rhino horn is now probably the most uh, expensive uh, commodity on this planet. Um, it's certainly overtaken gold, things like gold and platinum by far. The end users paying up to $95,000 US dollars a kilogram. Originally when this crisis hit us, the first thing we had to do was retrain all our field rangers and re-equipment. We started with uh, a couple of dogs uh, also some seven years ago or so and uh, I think the dog population has grown to about 50 now. Our success rate with catching poachers has, has improved hugely with, with the use of dogs. We have tracker dogs which follow spoor for us. We would take days to possibly track and, and catch a poacher, whereas the dogs are cutting that down to hours now. We then are looking now and working towards also getting sniffer dogs in to work at our gates for um, sniffing for obviously animal parts and also for arms and ammunition. The, the, the rhino's in, good, in a good state in Kruger. Um, in 2015, we've managed to show a, a re reduction in the number of uh, animals lost. And um, we're confident that we can take this on and we will eventually win this war. Okay, we're off to go find Ben and SP. They've hidden somewhere in the bush and we're gonna take the tracker dogs with us. We're gonna test out their skills and hopefully they're gonna sniff them out. Let's see, let's go. So how long do you train the dogs for before they, they go out into the wild and track poachers? Every dog, it, it just depends, yeah. um, but it's average between six to eight weeks. Okay, and how long has Badger been working in the field for? Badger's been working in the field for two years. It is a big five, a big five area, so yeah. when you go there, um, there's obviously always dangerous game that you have to be aware of. Yeah. Poachers are heavily armed, um, so it is it is an occupational hazard, if I yeah. can put it like that. But a good dog can work them from the prime is probably about three to, I'd say, about seven years. Okay. Then when the dogs have done and they're retired, they either get the choice to go with the handler and you can go and pension with your dog. That's so amazing. That is absolutely incredible. How's it feel being caught? Feels pretty good. <laughs> it's hard to understand the lengths these volunteers go to protect the rhinos until you experience it yourself. After having the opportunity to spend some time with the volunteers staying in their camp, you understand the passion and the love they have for the park, the rhinos they protect, and each of their dogs. From sniffing out arms and ammunition to tracking poachers, which ultimately leads to increased arrests, it's clear to see these dogs are playing a huge role in the war against poaching. Limited funding means efficiency is key in this increasingly expensive fight against the poachers. The war is by no means over, but there is more hope than ever to save this beautiful species.